America's Apollo moon landing missions as in hopes absolutely no one will tell. Why would the Americans perpetuate to the world at large such a monumental lie and an outright deliberate complete falsification? To understand this, you must first know who instigated and proposed America's Apollo moon landing missions. This was American President John F. Kennedy and his administration, along with Kennedy Vice President Lyndon Baines Johnson. Vice President Johnson was in direct control of NASA following administrative changes to the American Constitution. Changes in American constitutional law which put the Vice President in charge of the Space Council as opposed to the President. The constitutional change allowed the Kennedy administration the practical ability and political control to demand from NASA they carry out the Kennedy orders and the administration's orders to NASA were to effect and instigate immediately the American Apollo space program. To achieve his administration's ends, Vice President Johnson set up first an ad hoc committee and eventually a fully staffed advisory panel. Johnson employed the chosen panel of expert political advisors. This was to guide NASA to its goal and the administration's ambition of landing men on the moon, particularly as Johnson and Kennedy knew nothing of space exploration. None of them as politicians with the experience or professional ability to understand anything of NASA's space flight capability. However, on this panel to directly advise and effectively control the space agency NASA were absolutely no expertise to be found in the field of space exploration either, save for it of a single panel member Dr. Robert D. Ruth and NASA employee. Instead, Vice President Lyndon Baines Johnson preferred to employ a collection of former Los Alamos atom bomb scientists from America's Manhattan Project or even less qualified, but nevertheless high-ranking U.S. Air Force or Navy chiefs such as General Bernard Shriver as well former Assistant Secretary of the Navy Kenneth Lear. If not, such luminaries found in the high ranks of America's military establishments then ballistic missile technicians whose previous engagements would appear to have shown more and keener interest in producing people ballistic nuclear missiles or even past ballistic delivery systems but again, in even these panel members, no actual hands-on expertise in space exploration was to be found. And if not, that then, the totally unqualified, yet still in Johnson's eyes, somehow significant media men who sat also on the Vice President's advisory panel, men such as Edwin Land, inventor, CEO and co-founder of the Polaroid Corporation. This the very man who invented Polaroid Zim's tomatic camera, as will the CEO and head of the CBS News and Broadcasting Corporation, Mr. Frank Stumpton, and another individual from the Manhattan Project, America's atom bomb program called Donald Hornig, an explosive expert and chemist who went on immediately after advising on Apollo to head of CEO of the Coda Eastman Corporation. How in any sense could these men be said to be qualified and in any way fit to advise or supervise never mind effect full control over NASA to direct America's space agency on how they should undertake their task of placing men on the moon? Perhaps we should assume the reality of the situation was indeed that they were not. Represented also on the panel that though slightly more qualified than the others was one very high-ranking official and then former Secretary of the Army and also the then CEO of General Dynamics, the corporation that by sheer token of coincidence actually produced America's ballistic nuclear missiles in conjunction with Glenn Martin. This was the figure of a certain Mr. Frank Pace who was also America's secret president in times of emergency as this man was privately charged with the responsibility of governance over the American nation from the safety of a military bunker. This asked Mr. Frank Pace as post as the most senior member of the so-called secret council termed the Eisenhower Eight. This meant Frank Pace was also America's singularly most powerful figure. Jerome Wiseman also on the panel of advisors was sacked 
by President Dwight D. Eisenhower and also named by President Nixon during the disclosure at the Watergate Hotel and scandal as potentially hostile and treacherous, dangerous to America for his stance on nuclear proliferation and man believing that even more deadly and confrontational nuclear missiles were a good thing when in fact the U.S. State Department and U.S. government of the time certainly didn't agree with the man. Weisner was the most stubborn, outspoken and public critic of NASA as this man constantly abused his position on the Vice President's panel to state NASA at every opportunity and is to push through and make clear his very own private agenda and philosophy of bigger nuclear weapons and faster weapons delivery systems. And to think this was the very reason and item he fell out with Eisenhower over. To say and few corrupt persons and corporations with previous criminal activity help push through Apollo is an understatement simply wouldn't be true but this just in case you didn't know. As businessman, industrialist, serving panel member and long time Johnson's political financier Mr. Cogail had been prosecuted for bribing his work forced to vote for Ben's Johnson. So it would be by pure chance and mere coincidence Mr. Cagale's construction business built NASA's Johnson Space Center and Space Center named graciously after the man Vice President Johnson and this to serve all his patriotic efforts in influencing America's space program. More coincidental is the figure of another Johnson panel member and construction firm boss in certain Mr. George Brown of the Brown Root Construction Firm. Mr. Brown, given his occupation, is not easily identified as an expert witness or indeed to give expert or professional advice or testimony regards a manned mission to the moon by America's space agency NASA. However, as a panel member, he would be more than satisfactory to lend a hand in constructing alongside the Gale interests the Lyndon Baines Johnson Space Center, which by luck or thought perhaps even by just being in the right place at the right time, the Brown Root construction firm had the good fortune to. It would be fair to raise claims without substance of political corruption, since to date no case has been filed to American attorneys but there certainly is the faintest stare of it, if not the actual evidence. Also similarly prosecuted by America's federal authority and serving on the good vice president's panel was the General Dynamics Corporation itself prosecuted for illegal arms dealing in the past under its previous corporation name of the Electric Boat Company. On the subject of criminals, it would be complete to mention suspected war criminals such as Herr Marvin Braun, German Nazi rocket scientist and the toast to all the hypocrites of NASA's mission control. Nevertheless, still unfortunately a Nazi and also serving directly on Vice President Johnson's advisory committee. The same committee that rallied in barrage of abuses prompting NASA chief Hugh Biden, an ADAMX engineer with over 30 years experience, to tender his resignation in this from a man who had overseen NASA from its very early and pioneering years, to all its past success and all its unfortunate and unavoidable failures, Dryden heard personally of his organization of NASA stated and curated by the Johnson panel the couple of unrelated persons to which everyone had each his end to be satisfied and got from the successful launch of the Apollo moon landing missions. NASA was publicly criticized by the Johnson panel through the press as not having the necessary professional expertise or choice of staff and was further cited as a national embarrassment and organization to be noted as a disgrace of national concern and was for the recent and completely unavoidable yet the inevitable sacrifice of the expected death of an astronaut. However, Hugh Dryden would not have been so easily impressed or moved as having understood just exactly who that committee of men really were, and it's astonishing to hear today the brave tenacity of this incredible NASA man from White House audio transcripts, to hear the NASA's chief openly argue and dispute with the President, America's Commander-in-Chief over the proposed Apollo moon landing mission's technical details. This because Hugh Dryden knew better than most the real driving force behind the Johnson-led assault on his NASA organization. 
Johnson's collection of atom bomb scientists, ballistic engineers, arms manufacturers, arms dealers, warmongers, and some of America's businessmen of the lowest repute. Because as an engineer, Dryden knew every personality on that panel and he knew full well America's rocket capabilities and heavy lifting ability along with ballistic technology would increase tenfold through Apollo and not only would NASA benefit but also the arms manufacturers, the arms dealers and their parent corporations. Corporations such as General Dynamics, Glenn Martin and Groom. To Dryden and many on the panel and rocket is a missile and a missile is quite simply a rocket by another name as in engineering and construction terms there is absolutely no distinction at all between these two items. Then, should it come as no surprise that the blueprint means the plans and the patent rights on the shelf and lawfully held by private firms, the same firms that built Apollo. That these firms, these arms manufacturers and Apollo's chief designers sh should choose to launch no sooner than President Nixon, perhaps with the knowledge of the order and discussions behind closed doors sensibly took the step and ordered the outright cancellation of Apollo and this for its obscene costs and its insatiable fiscal demands. And deadly new weapon with a scale of mortal human death and destruction that's truly unimaginable and apocalyptic nuclear horror will to be openly flouted and up for sale on the world's arms market. And myth and multi-independent re-entry vehicle, orbiting nuclear weapons carrying 27 megaton value warheads that are capable of striking 27 independent and separate targets. This was the product of Kennedy, the peacemaker president's decision. This was financed and trialed through Apollo and the American public's tax-paying dollars. This is the true product of Apollo, whose worth to some is more than any nondescript moon rocks. And this had always been in the aims and ambitions of many on the Johnson Committee of so-called expert political advisors. This is where the real conspirators lie. This is where the real hoax is perpetuated. This is the real Apollo Hope's truth.